And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, O my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered. That this woman was delivered also and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house. Save we too in the house. And this woman's child died in the night. Because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me. While thine handmaid slept. And laid it in her bosom. And laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck. Behold it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning. Behold It was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, The one saith, The one saith, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead, and the other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son, and she said, O my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. While Solomon, Solomon, was a great, great, great man. And um, again, that was First Kings chapter 3, verse 3 through 28. And we see here how Solomon was blessed. When God came to him um, in a dream and asked him, he said, basically, what is it that I can give you? What is it that um, you want from me? And so Solomon asked um, to give him an understanding heart to judge the people because he was over so many, many people. Now here, again, let me read verse 7 and 8 and 9. And now, O Lord my God, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen. Saying he's in the midst of the people, he's over the people. A great people that cannot be numbered nor nor counted for multitude. So, Verse 9, he says, Give therefore 
thy servant, an understanding heart to judge thy people. He asked for an understanding heart to judge the people. Such a multitude of people, and he wanted to do right by the people. So again, he asked for an understanding heart to judge the people. He said, goes on to say, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this? Thy so great a people. See, he wanted an understanding heart to judge the people and be able to discern between good and bad when they came to him with a problem. And so it says the speech pleased the Lord. And God said because he didn't ask for anything for himself. He asked for the people. He didn't ask for anything for himself. He didn't ask for long life or riches or any of that help with his enemies, um, the life of the, to, to, to take the life of the, his enemies. He said, you didn't ask for anything, but you asked for understanding to discern the judgment. And so um, he says he's done that. So he's given him the judgment. He's given him the knowledge to good and bad to do right by the people. He, he's given him that. She said, okay, so again, let's go back down to um, verse 9. He wants an understanding heart to judge the people, that he, he may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? That's what he wanted. So God gave him that. And because he didn't ask again for himself. You know, he wasn't selfish. I want this, my, 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 riches and all of that. He wanted to do right again by the people. So God granted that. Now, verse 13, God says, And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked. He gave him, he says, both riches and honor. So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. So he also gave him riches and honors that there will never be a king like him ever in all the days. Never, never, ever gave him riches and honor. And then God goes on to say in verse 14, And if thou wilt walk in my ways... To keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk. Then I will lengthen thy days. He's going to lengthen his days of living, of life. Hallelujah. That is so wonderful. Um, Riches and honor is going to lengthen his days. Giving him all of that. And also the wisdom, knowledge, and and everything to, to, to help the people out. And so then Solomon awoke and um, he knew it was a dream. And um, it says he came to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings. He offered up burnt offerings and and, um, peace offerings um, to the Lord and made a feast for all his servants. Isn't that wonderful? He was just so grateful and so happy in these things that he did to to the Lord for the Lord. And so then there were two women that came. First thing that happened, God gave them the wisdom, understanding, riches, all of that. Two women came to him and um, they were together and both of them had a baby at the same time. And one of the babies died. Um, and um, I think they were sleeping and one of the babies died. So somebody switched out a baby. And um, one person was blank. Was some, one of the women switched out the dead baby. And, and gave the, took the, the, the one that had the living baby. Took that living baby. And switched out the dead baby. And so uh, when the woman awoke. Um, they had discrepancy there. And they had to go to Solomon. And... Um, they were saying, they were blaming each other. One was saying that the dead baby was the other ladies, and the lady was saying, no, that's not my baby. The baby that lives is my baby, and I know it. So they were going back and forth, back and forth. 
about whose baby it was. And um and they were denying the dead baby. So um Solomon um told them he said told them to um divide the child in half. He said, Bring me a sword. They bought him a sword. And he said, Well, let's just cut the baby in two. We're gonna divide the baby in half. And you take one half <laughs> and and you take one half. So the one that spoke up and said, No, no, don't don't split the baby in half. Don't do any harm to the baby. Don't cut the baby. Give the baby to the other woman that's saying it's hers. And then the other woman said, Oh, go ahead, split the baby in half and cut the baby in half. Give me half and give and, and give her half. So Solomon knew that the one that said to give the the whole baby to the other woman, Solomon knew that she was the mother. And the one that said split the baby in half and let's give half and half, Solomon knew that she was the one that had the baby that had died. So the thing is, Solomon, all the people feared him now because of this judgment. They knew that the judgment and, and these things was the wisdom was given to him from God. So they knew, they knew. See, being a mother, being a mother, um, he knew, you know, you, you, I would just, I, I put myself in that place and I would say, well, you know, no, don't cut my baby. If, you know, if, if this is the way it has to be, just give her the whole baby. You know, I would be hurt and everything, but I, I would rather to see my baby living than dead. And so by that, by the woman saying that he knew he knew that she was the mother. So this is very, very good. These stories, these things, these happenings in the Bible, they're good. And um, you say, you, you see yourself in these scriptures and, and, and they're for, for learning, for training, for understanding, for teaching, for reproof, for everything that we need. And there's power in these scriptures when we read and we read them out loud. And we read them and we read them. You know, and, 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 and there's power and there's everything in those scriptures. There's healing, there's everything. So we see ourselves in these scriptures and they help us today. And we, you know, say, well, what, what, reading this passage here, what does it mean for me? You know, I mean, there's a lot that you can get out of um, this passage right here. You know, when we pray to God, um, are you always asking for me, 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 God, give me this, I want this, I want riches, I want this, I, you know, what are we asking God for? Are we thanking him? Are we asking God himself, you know, God, um, how are you today? Good morning, good afternoon. Because there are things that go on in heaven there are things that go on with the angels trying to come down here and 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 do deliver what they need to deliver and things like that that's why they, they you hear the word spiritual warfare you know the, the angel may the devil may be holding one of the angels up that is to come down here you know um to 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 do good or to deliver something to us down here on the earth. So we have to pray too. For those delivering angels. For their safety coming down. Going down and going back up. And because things happen. And we ask God. You know God how are you doing? You know. Um, I know you know you're almighty. In everything. But you know God gets angry at times too. These things going on in the world and so forth. So are, are we concerned about God? Are we concerned about what's going on with our Father? Have we asked our Father how we're doing? Have we sat to listen to, to, to hear His response? Are we, we praising the Heavenly Father and thanking Him? You know, so we have to... Think about Solomon here, thought about the people. 
He wasn't thinking about himself. He thought about the people and serving the Lord and doing 